Werewolves have been around the Sims franchise since the very beginning, with The Sims making magic, where you could change the look of your sim to a werewolf, to The Sims 2 Pets, where your sim could be infected with lycanthropy, transform into their werewolf form at night, and even change your sims' personality. Then all the way to The Sims 3, when they looked like this, to, you know, what we have now. No, but all jokes aside, they might not be everyone's cup of tea in terms of looks, animation, or gameplay. However, there is actual lore to uncover about them in game, and it's pretty interesting. So let's do some digging. Hello everyone, and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today, we're uncovering werewolf lore from Moonwood Mill. Where's that, you ask? Well, it's in The Sims 4. But Miss Lore, I thought you hated The Sims 4, what are you doing? That's just actually a rumor being spread about me. I think The Sims 4 lacks in many ways, but I sniffed out some interesting storytelling. So we're going to see if it's up to our high lore standards. There's also quite a lot of lore that I still need to explore, so if I don't mention everything, that's probably because there's a part two coming. So get your snacks ready, let me know what you're having in that snack report, and don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. All right, let's get straight into the video. Let me start off with the shortest review for the pack ever. I've played a few hours and for the most part, it's a lot of fun. I love peeing everywhere and having Sims absolutely hate me. Also, fighting them at random is great fun as well. Some really gruesome animations though, EA, what the hell? <laughs> Although there are a few downsides. One that really bothered me is that it's kind of repetitive if all you're trying to do is rake up those werewolf ability points. It would have been great if each level, and there aren't that many really, had different challenges to face. Another is that you can't have familiars like in Realm of Magic, even though the lore you get to uncover mentions them all the time. But it was fun nonetheless to find all the lore secrets. Your sim will have to do lots of digging, figuratively and literally, as they try to uncover and understand more about the history and origins of the werewolves. Okay, now that the mini review is out of the way, let's dive into the lore. For the purposes of this video, I created a werewolf sim. Meet Jimmy Wolf. He is new to Moonwood Mill, and all he wants is to find his ancestors and explore the lore of the town. When you first begin the game, you soon realize there is a lot to uncover. There are two werewolf packs, the Wildfangs and the Moonwood Collective. One embraces the fury, and the latter, not so much. It's up to you to decide which one you want to be a part of. Or you can choose neither and be friendly with both. What's that you say? You want to make your own pack? Well, you can't. So anyway, let's find some lore. I started introducing Jimmy to the two pack leaders, but got distracted by the creepy sewers and the underground tunnels. You can explore the underground tunnel, which will probably unveil lots of secrets, but as a runt, which is the lowest level of werewolf you can be, you have a long way to go to be able to unlock all the different rooms. You can also get hurt down there if you're unprepared and not strong enough, so watch out. Next, I had Jimmy mark his territory, scavenge the ground, and read lots of books on being a werewolf so he can fill up his fury bowl, or whatever this is called, and turn for the first time. Oh, and in case you were wondering who this is, don't mind her. We ordered food earlier, she wouldn't leave, and I thought Jimmy might need some company, so I asked her if she wanted to be roommates. And she's now regretting all of her life choices. Through scavenging, you find lots of different artifacts and items that are encrypted in a strange symbol language that, of course, you need werewolf ability points to decipher. So there he was, constantly marking his territory, terrorizing his roommate, scavenging the ground, fighting random sims and pack leaders, probably not a great idea in the long run, whilst trying to read werewolf lore books in order to gain one or two ability points. In the end, he managed to get the lunar epiphany unlocked and he could start deciphering all those relics. In his study, he found a lot of different stories and characters. At first, they were all jumbled up together, so it was really difficult to figure out who's who. But then, I pieced it all together. Let's begin. Greg is a character mentioned throughout the discoverable relics, but also through some build by mode items. By reading the description of one relic made of his familiar Brutus, we find out Greg is one of the original Mooncasters and is a very powerful werewolf, as Brutus is an alpha. 
We also find out that through their familiars, werewolves were able to adopt traits and aptitudes. Which is strange considering this isn't in the gameplay, but yeah, let's keep going. The build buy items mention what I only assumed is Greg under the full name of Gregorius Lundvik. These are Lundvik's Loom flagship rug, Avelina's trusty telescope, and the hasty replacement pallet bed. Just through the descriptions of these items, we find out that his mother, Pernilla Lundvik, who is the creator of Lundvik's looms, enlisted him as a toddler to help stress test her rug prototype, so she could ensure no amount of wear and tear will unravel her creation. Greg's diary entry as well as Avelina's trusty telescope reveal that Greg has a problem with keeping his werewolf fury in check. In one of his entries, he describes how he went onto one of his rampages and managed to destroy his wife's telescope. He then repaired the telescope leg and she ended up preferring it that way. Again, through the build buy mode items, specifically Avelina's trusty telescope, we find that she was Greg's wife. Through this item, we find out she studied space and discovered Sixam, the alien planet. It's revealed through one of his diary entries that the two met in Glimmerbrook and he wooed her with poetry of the stars and moon. Interestingly, Glimmerbrook is the town that shipped with Realm of Magic, so they might have originated there but later moved to Moonwood Mill. Avelina was one of the original mooncasters as described in the canine familiar figurine Gibby. After she became a werewolf, she dedicated her life to her astrology studies. She aimed to do all she could to help her husband Gregorius with his exploration and experimentation with Fury. Her discoveries surrounding the effects of the lunar cycle on Fury were crucial to her husband Gregorius' breakthroughs on harnessing werewolf power. We also know that her familiar Gibby gave her the power she needed to study the moon and the workings of space. When you read Greg's diary, you find that he wrote how Avelina would often forget to care for herself whilst he was out on his rampages, as she would become transfixed by her telescope. He wanted to control the fury and rampages better to be able to care for his wife. We never really find out why she passed away, but one of my theories is that whilst unable to care for herself and with Greg gone most of the time, she couldn't take it anymore and starve to death. It might explain why Greg is so full of fury and can no longer control it all. Both Greg and Avelina discovered the Luna fish, a fish created by the same magic that turned both of them into werewolves, as seen in this diary entry. To piece everything together nicely, I will have to jump around to different characters so that the story can come together. So here are some of the side characters. First up is Yina Kia. She is said to have been a dear friend of Avelina and Greg's and an original mooncaster who died eaten by a cow plant during a joint defense mission between werewolf mooncasters and cow plant tamers moo casters. Yina was also the wife of a non-werewolf called Emmy. Yina had Renga as her familiar who wouldn't leave her wife's side after her death. Through a relic called tame cow plant jawbone, you get hints of an avenged death. Putting these two clues together, we know that Greg was really badly affected by his friend's death, that he ended up killing the cow plant that murdered Yina and scribbled Avenge You on its jawbone. Next is Pernilla Lundvik, who we know was Greg's mother and starter of the Lundvik Loom Textiles Empire. As seen in the description of Lundvik's Lund Velvet Theatre-esque chair, she had the opportunity to design her signature theatre chairs during the golden age of Starlight Boulevard with Lun Velvet upholstery. After sending thousands of them to be made, she lost the opportunity to Blanc Co. However, the chairs that remain are still being sold as antiques. Maria Volkov was an original mooncaster, married to John Volkov, and quite the opposite character of Greg. She could fully control her fury, and she was also the writer of A History of Moonwood Mills. Greg, Maria, and her husband John wanted to find a cure together, and they seem to have succeeded. Next is Celine, the owner of the Grimtooth Bar in Moonwood Mill. Through looking at the description of her bar and her bio, Celine is friendly with both sides of the werewolf packs, and she managed to get both to help fashion her a bar out of scraps found around the town. She also has lots of anger towards vampires, as she shredded the famous Claude Masterpiece painting. Next is the librarian werewolf, Wolfgang Wilder. 
He works at the Moonwood Mill Library, and when I asked him to pursue their dream job, he mentions he loves writing fiction. In doing a bit more digging and reading all the werewolf books, you find out Wolfgang is the real author behind The Wolf Next Door, Pax and Prejudice, Fanged Friends Forever, and The Werewolf Who Came In From The Cold. In reading any of these books again, you find out that it's really him who's been writing them, but he goes by the pen name of Wolfgang Mulder. Okay, now let's look at some of the lore I found about Moonwood Mill. A lot of it came from reading the book by Maria Volkov, A History of Moonwood Mill. One of the bits in the book says that the original settlers to the area were refugees seeking an end to the conflict that had been plaguing them. This is probably a reference to how werewolves were seeking refuge from the war with vampires. It's mentioned that Greg came from Glimmerbrook, so it's safe to assume that werewolves took refuge in Moonwood Mill. They sought a connection with nature and the moon, and they came upon what's commonly called Moonwood's Howling Point today. And the breathtaking night views and the crescent-shaped lake beneath both seemed good omens for their pursuits. We also find out that before the mill was established, Moonwood Mill was just known as Moonwood. The name was coined by locals who believed the surrounding forest was imbued with lunar energy. The town also flourished with the arrival of its factories and mill. Many sims traveled to this remote town from San Myshuno, eager to escape the urban hustle and bustle. The vast wilderness surrounding the town's center promised an easier lifestyle, more in tune with nature. The book also mentions Luna Fish and how it originated from the Crescent Lake beneath Moonwood Mill's overlook. The fish is infused with moon energy and the species was created in a spell-casting overload during an untamed moon-casting ritual. If eaten, the fish increases athleticism and sate the hunger need. Moonwood Mill is the home to the moon petal, which was also created in a spell-casting overload during an untamed moon-casting ritual. Evidence of similar plant cultivation has not been reported anywhere else in the world to this day. When ground to a powder and mixed with liquid, it is said to ease a sims's humors and improve the mood. Now, there is some lore about Moonwood Mill from the relics as well. Mysopotamia is mentioned throughout several relics, including the Mysopotamian Tablet, Wise Wolfman, Mooncaster Pot Shard, Learning, and Mysopotamian Tablet, Cowplant Taming. From all of these, we find out that Moonwood Mill was home to a small ancient city, part of Mysopotamia. The inhabitants believed that the greatest minds of their society were reborn as wolves that stored their wisdom in the moon via howl. As the cycle progressed towards a full moon, the growing light represented more and more stored wisdom. On full moon nights, Mysopotamians would sport wolf-like masks and ceremonially draw upon the moon's stored wisdom. As the cycle then progressed to a new moon, the light leaving the moon each night represented the stored wisdom slowly dispersing to the Mysopotamian people. As the first modern werewolves, Moonwood Mill's mooncasters likely gleaned much of their information on harnessing the moon's power from studying the Mysopotamians. Mysopotamia is clearly a play on Mesopotamia, which is a region of Southwest Asia in the Tigris and Euphrates river system that benefited from the area's climate and geography to host the beginnings of human civilization. This is also where Mysopotamian cow plant taming had its origins from, the relic claiming that it is a forgotten aspect of the Mesopotamian culture. They were tamed as stationary sentinels of defense and sometimes crossbreeding them to be mobile attack units, though it was quite difficult to safely reproduce mobile cow plants for obvious reasons. In modern times, it turns out the mooncasters were not the only group seeking unorthodox answers to the vampire problem during Operation Eternal Flame. The Moo Casters, who 100% came up with their name first, total coincidence, attempted to adapt Mysopotamian cow plant taming practices to their needs. It was an initial success, and they had a prosperous alliance with the Moon Casters. Needless to say, it didn't last long after one of the tamed cow plants feasted upon Yina Kia, an original Moon Caster, and Gregorius and Avelina Lundvik's dearest friend. So, it's clear here that the Mooncasters, who were the cowplant tamers, copied the Mooncaster name. We also know that the alliance between the two didn't last long because of Yina Kia's gruesome story. All in all, I think this pack has lots of lore to uncover and get through within the werewolf gameplay, and I actually enjoyed myself quite a bit. 
There's a lot more to uncover though, so join me next time as we'll be looking at the rest of the inhabitants of Moonwood Mill, such as the remaining Volkov family and some other Moonwood Mill dwellers that play a huge part in the story. Alright guys, there you have it, lots of info on Moonwood Mill and some of its inhabitants. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know your theories and findings in the comments below. I would like to thank my Suicide channel members Jiggly and Chrissy Pine. Thank you both for your support. I would also like to thank my patrons Whitney Marion, Papa Khan, Negative Dana, Aurora Grimm, LeMay, ML, Alia Deshayas, Shelby Hill, Perlog Anwell, Amy Louise, Carolyn, Keita John the Arcane Archer, Nicole Dante, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, and Asmina. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!